Let me start by congratulating the organizers of this International Conference on Construction Materials and also thanking them for giving me this opportunity to present a keynote lecture on the research that we are doing here at IIT Palakkad. I am Sunita. I am a faculty at IIT Palakkad. Today I will be presenting some work that we are doing here as part of uh, the research on fiber reinforced concrete. The title of my talk is Development of Experimental Development and Experimental Validation of Design Methodology for Fiber Reinforced Concrete Payments. Uh, the co-authors of this work is uh, Mr. Ajish and Dr. Veena. Uh, I belong to the Environmental Sciences and Sustainability Center at IIT Palakkad, and Ajish and Dr. Veena belong to the Department of Civil Engineering at IIT Palakkad. Today, the presentation will be uh, in this uh, flow. There will be an introduction, then there will be a discussion on FRC suitability for pavements, uh, followed by a discussion on fatigue performance and how design of FRC pavement is done in, with respect to fatigue, and how we develop those generalized fatigue models for FRC and uh, how the design has been modified. Uh, Rigid pavement consists of a slab that is laid on a prepared subbase or the subgrade. And the difference between the action of a rigid pavement and flexible pavement is that rigid pavement resists the load by slab action, whereas in the flexible pavement, the road is, load is resisted by grain to grain transfer. So the major factor in the design of rigid pavement is flexural strength and uh, the material commonly used for rigid pavement construction is concrete. Now, if we ask ourselves the question whether concrete pavements are sustainable, we can have two facets to the same question. Uh, sustainability indicates that we are looking at all the three facets. So we have to look at the economic impact, social impact, and environmental impact. So if you translate that to actual performance characteristics, let's see, due to the uh, longer service life and the use of local materials, very low maintenance compared to the flexible pavements, we could consider concrete pavements sustainable. However, the use of cement is always uh, questionable uh, with respect to sustenance value. So when we talk about concrete, we are always consuming a lot of non-replenishable resources. And if a maintenance is needed, it is generally very high cost. So the same uh, material, same application, we can look at it in two uh, aspects. So if you look at the scenario today, when we are dealing with sustainability analysis, we move ahead and the paradigm has shifted to a cradle to cradle analysis. That means we are looking at longer service life period. And in this aspect, if you look, the initial cost of construction will no longer be the decision making uh, prospect. So we have to look at rehabilitation, then salvage value, end of life, what we do, and even recycling. So with respect to uh, a, a longer uh, maintenance-free service life, if you see rigid payments have always had cracking as one major mode of failures. And cracking could be due to very many reasons. And one of the prominent reasons for cracking is fatigue cracking. And uh, in, if we need to improve the service life of rigid pavements, there should be some measures to control cracking. And that means there has to be some strategies adopted to improve the cracking potential of concrete. One way would be to increase the flexural strength and Flexural strength increase means higher grade of concrete, which might not be the always the best solution because then we are increasing cement consumption and difficulty in working. So let's look at the other possibility that we go for improved cracking resistance, improving the cracking resistance of concrete. 
And consequently, we improve the fatigue performance. So this will lead us to think how to improve uh, the cracking resistance of concrete or it, it translates to improved ductility or toughness and fiber reinforced concrete is definitely the best solution for that because adding fibers to concrete, these discrete short uh, random fi discrete short fibers randomly distributed in the concrete matrix will impart ductility because these fibers bridges crack, delay the con delay and control crack propagation and consequently it will increase tensile strains at at rupture in the insert here you can see the figure of uh, fibers mixed in concrete and how the fibers are bridging the cracks which translates to much higher post cracking capacity in as you can see here in the um, just one minute, I will just. Yeah, how you. Sorry. I hope you are able to see my um, pointer. So you can see that it translates to higher post cracking capacity compared to the plain concrete. The orange curve represents that of plain concrete, and the blue, the maroon, and the yellow curves belong to fiber reinforced concrete. The randomness of the orientation of fiber is very clearly seen in the uh, inset picture, uh, which is an X-ray tomography image of fire concrete with hooked ended steel fibers. Now, what are the benefits of adding fibers to in FRC payment? Due to the improved flexural performance, uh, you have because of the practice capacity, you have improved flexible performance. Therefore, you are able to reduce slack thickness and increase the joint spacing. Uh, crack deterioration itself is reduced, so initiation of crack might not be prevented. However, in crack opening will be uh, much controlled and deterioration will be reduced. That will translate to improved service life. Now coming to a choice of what type of fibers to be used in uh, pavements, you have an option of using both micro and macro fibers. Micro is used when the diameter of fiber is less than 0.3 mm. And if the diameter is higher than 0.3 mm, you call it macro. There's no other uh, classification which uh, specifies how to identify whether a fiber is micro or macro. It does not relate to performance, it only relates to the dimensions. With respect to material, you can have metallic conventional fibers like steel, polypropylene, polyester fibers, glass, uh, and um, carbon fibers. There are non-conventional fibers also coming up like amorphous metallic fibers, basalt fibers. So both uh, micro and macro fibers are available in various uh, various of these materials. However, the, perf the, the choice of fiber should be based on the performance characteristics. Now, what is the performance characteristic we are looking for? We will understand that when we look at the design in detail. Before we move on to the design, let's still, uh, let's do it, dwell a little bit on uh, the fatigue behavior of fiber reinforced concrete. The importance of fatigue in this discussion is that since Pavement failures are generally con uh, generally controlled by fatigue cracking or generally due to fatigue cracking. Fatigue performance of a material will directly translate to the service life conditions of the pavement. So in general, we know that fatigue performance of concrete is not very good because it's almost considered as a brittle material. But uh, what is fatigue? Fatigue is progressive permanent internal structure in concrete and the, the, the manifestation of the fatigue performance is that when you subject the material to repeated loading, the material might fail at a load which is lower than its capacity, load carrying capacity. So that is the problem with fatigue and commonly 
fatigue performance is characterized using the SN curve, which is the curve between various stress ratios. Stress ratios is the applied stress to the maximum strength of the material, which is the stress ratio, and the number of cycles to which or number of repetitions that the particular material can withstand. That means if you look at the figure on the right side of this um, of the slide, you can see the SM curve for plain concrete and various dosages fibers in concrete. What it means is that if you are applying 90% of the strength, 0.9 stress level means you are applying a repeatedly a uh, load that is about 90% of the maximum load carrying capacity, then the failure will occur at a uh, uh, value, n value that is correspondingly log 2. Now, if you are reducing it to 0.7, that is 70% of the maximum load carrying capacity is being applied, then you can keep on applying for a larger number of repetition. So it will be somewhere around a log n value of 5.5. So this is what is meant, uh, this is how uh, fatigue affects the performance of material. And uh, to characterize fatigue, flexure loading is very commonly used. Of course, axial tensile loading is commonly used in metallic, uh, metallic materials characterization for fatigue. However, in concrete, as we all know, tensile characterization is very difficult. So people resort to flexural characterization. So we will come to the details. So uh, if you look at the test parameters, there may there is variation. Since there is no standardized test for fatigue testing, people, uh, the, the researchers have adopted various methods of doing this testing. Variation can be in applied stress level, frequency of load cycling, just one minute. Yeah. And uh, review. Uh, so, so, you can have various type of uh, test parameters. Again, if you look at fiber reinforced concrete, researchers have varied fiber type, fiber volume, and aspect ratio. So, if you look at the SN curves that are represented here, it is clear that the plain concrete has a much lower performance compared to fiber reinforced concrete. Now, these are some of the existing literature that is available on uh, fatigue testing of fiber reinforced concrete. And uh, what we have done is plotted these curves, these, um, these data that is available. And on, on uh, many of them have been plotted along with the, the SN model that is applicable for plain concrete. So the leftmost line that is of IRC 582010, IRC is Indian Road Congress. The growth IRC specifies a, an SN relationship or fatigue life um, model for plain concrete, which is represented by the dashed line on the leftmost end. All others are predicted models for fiber reinforced concrete. And this figure clearly demonstrates the enhanced performance of concrete when fibers are added with respect to fatigue. Some of the fatigue models developed by authors for fiber reinforced concrete are presented here. All models are taking, uh, are presenting a relationship between number of cycles n to stress ratio. Now, once we've understood that there is a specific improvement in the fatigue performance of FRP, let's look at how pavements are designed when fibers are added to fiber grain for, to concrete. In India, we have the Indian Road Conference uh, publication, SP 46, 2013. Uh, we also have the American Concrete Pavement Association's methodology. Uh, ACTE methodology for FRC pavements. There has been uh, advancements in this area and uh, the mechanistic empirical design that, devel that has been developed in IIT Madras for FRC pavement will also be, uh, will also be discussed in this 
presentation. Now, what is the rationale about for the design of FRC payments? We know that a rigid payment design, the design is based on elastic stresses and the major material parameter is the flexural strength. However, if you look at the behavior of fibers, fiber reinforced concrete, we have seen that the enhanced characteristic is the crack resistance. So the fibers come into picture only after the first crack. So we have to adopt a methodology that would capture the enhanced performance in the post cracking regime. So that is why always it's better to adopt an inelastic design methodology for doing the design for FRC. Now in IRCSP 46 and all the other existing codes that are talking about pavement designs for with fibers, inelastic design methodology has been adopted. Now, most of these codes also propose modified SN relationship for uh, fibers FRC and that is incorporated in the fatigue damage analysis. So in, in IRC design method, those who are aware or familiar with the fiber reinforced concrete industrial flooring design as per the concrete society guidelines TR34, they would know that in the inelastic design, we consider that there is a yield line formed due to the load. The Considering that the slab is an infinite slab, the, the point load that is applied leads to the development of these radial lines which extends to, and then the circumferential line is formed and the crack extends to the top and when the crack appears at the top of the slab, the failure condition is reached. So due to the fact that the initial radial lines occur at the bottom of the slab and the fact that for slabs on grade, we can be a little bit more accommodative in the serviceability criteria. The collapse condition for design of FRC payment considers the appearance of crack at the top of the slab as the failure criteria. So by the time the crack appears at the top, the yield lines at the bottom of the slab have already fully developed and the moment at along these yield lines are already in the plastic moment capacity are uh, are in already in the uh, inelastic regime or the moment capacity is the plastic moment capacity of the material as uh, at the same time when we assume that for the negative yield line when the crack appears at the top then it is represented by the elastic moment carrying capacity. That is why when you go for the ultimate load design based on circular E-line theory, the allowable moment on the slab can be considered to be the sum of elastic moment carrying capacity and which is at the negative E-line at the top and the moment carrying capacity uh, along the positive wheel lines at the bottom of the slab. Now, this, this concept of using elastic and plastic moment carrying capacity was developed uh, for infinite slab. And when it was, this is almost, uh, this is the, uh, this is the uh, classic heel line theory. And when, this theory is applied for a reinforced concrete. The, it is easy to calculate the plastic moment capacity based on, on the yield, line, yield strength of reinforcement because we are expecting reinforcement to be there at the bottom of the slab. However, since now we are looking at fiber reinforced concrete, there has to be a material parameter that is characteristic of the plastic moment capacity. And that material parameter is considered to be 
the equivalent flexural strength or the residual flexural strength depending upon which standard or code we are using. In India, we use the post cracking. Uh, so essentially, the plastic moment capacity is represented by the flexural capacity of the material after cracking, right? So the equivalent flexural strength is a parameter that represents FEN is the parameter that represents the post cracking flexural strength of fibers, fiber reinforced concrete. To calculate this post cracking strength, a load deflection curve has to be obtained under displacement control and an average load at the post cracking area of the load deflection curve is obtained using this equation. FR which is the elastic moment capacity is a function of the maximum load or the peak load obtained at as P max. So FR is obtained using P max, FEN is obtained using an average load in the post cracking regime. And to calculate this average load, we use the expression that the area under the curve divided by the deflection. Now this calculation is very clearly explained in the, in the ex, uh, Indian Standard Code IS17161, which has been recently published for fiber reinforced concrete. Internationally also, you can refer to either EN14651, uh, which, which actually talks about FR, not FEN, or the, uh, uh, or the ASTM code, ASTM1609, uh, any of these codes, if you see, you will understand this calculation about how we reach these uh, values or material parameters. Now, in the IRC method, IRC SP46 method, uh, the classical cumulative fatigue damage analysis is also incorporated where we calculate the uh, allow the the the, uh, the, the theoretical allowable number of load repetitions using the SN relationship given uh, in the code and use that to calculate the cumulative fatigue damage based on the actual number of repetitions obtained from the axial load spectrum. So cumulative fatigue damage is the ratio of the expected repetitions to the calculated number of repetitions and if this value sum of all these values based on the axial load spectrum if this becomes less than one your design is considered safe so even for the frc pavement in irc sp46 this method is adopted however to calculate n the stress ratio used is still based on the elastic stresses due to load and not due to the inelastic stresses so there are these assumptions that we are considered and the fatigue damage check is still based on the elastic stress. This is a drawback of this method. And uh, so as I told you, we need to move forward in the design and we have to incorporate the inelastic uh, response of the material. So if we need to obtain the inelastic response even under fatigue, it's important to characterize uh, uh, fiber reinforced concrete flexural fatigue. And uh, some uh, literature is already available. Uh, these are some of the tests, uh, tests uh, that have been done all over the world on pre-cracked SFRC. So flexural fatigue of pre-cracked SFRC means the specimens are pre-cracked and then a fatigue load is applied. Whereas in the, in the models that were presented before this, the specimens were uncracked when the fatigue load is applied. So it is for before cracking. So that would give you an elastic uh, strength-based fatigue, whereas this would be a plastic strength-based fatigue. So based on these, uh, these studies, there have been many models proposed. Uh, again, it is mostly 
a relationship between the allowable number of repetitions and the flexural parameters. So it could be either stress ratio or the residual flexural strength obtained using a notched beam testing. So this uh, understanding that fatigue performance of fiber reinforced concrete gets improved and it is characterized by SN curve has brought about this uh, new design philosophy for fiber reinforced concrete using new line theory, which is uh, a mechanistic empirical approach. And it is, uh, it is modifying the allowable moment equation where the allowable moments, M elastic and M plastic, is sub is uh, factored. Now, we are all very familiar with safety factors, but that is directly applied either to load or material parameters based on a pro probabilistic understanding. Here, what is done is, based on the fatigue characteristic, a reduction factor is applied to the strength parameters. Now, let, let's look at it in detail. So elastic moment capacity, which, which is essentially the, elast the flexural capacity based on the maximum flexural strength, FR. FR is what are defined as we obtained using the Pmax from the load deflection curve. Pmax is the maximum load from the load deflection curve. So FR into H squared by 6 represents the moment capacity in the elastic um, condition. Now, this moment capacity is factored using a term x. Now, to obtain x, we, we go to the corresponding fatigue curve, that is the SN curve. So, if you see the dashed curve is that of an uncracked uh, test, test on FRC, which is uncracked. So, this is an elastic stress-based fatigue model, whereas the, the solid line represents an inelastic strength-based fatigue model. So this is because it is already pre-cracked. So these are the two uh, test configurations that I discussed earlier. So you can have an uncracked fatigue test or a pre-cracked fatigue test. Now, to obtain X, which is a reduction factor for an elastic moment capacity, you choose the number of repetitions that you want to know, want to apply on the uh, on the slab. Let's say it's about 2 million or 1 million. So it would be around 3. And uh, you log in somewhere here. And you find out what is the corresponding stress ratio value. Now what this means is, as long as you are applying a 90 percentage of the maximum load capacity, it can safely go up to n number of repetitions. So if you want to increase the number of repetitions, the x value would be lower. That means if, if you apply a load that is 90 percentage of the actual applied strength or 90 percentage of the strength. So that 0.9 is applied here. So that means that this material we are assuming that will not fail as long as we consider that the elastic moment capacity is only 90 percentage of the actual moment carrying capacity. So this is how uh, a factoring is done. Now for the plastic moment capacity, the pre-cracked FRC SN curve is used. Same methodology, choose the number of repetitions you want or you expect, get the Y value from the stress ratio, apply it to the equivalent flexural strength because that is what is representing the inelastic moment carrying capacity. So we factor down the strength and not directly apply to the load. So this is a more inclusive method where we are directly using both the strength and the reduction factors obtained from the fatigue or the monotonic flexural test of the material. So this is no, there is no, uh, there is no uh, probabilistic uh, factors involved. We are actually using an empirical, uh, mechanistic empirical reduction factor.
So uh, the problem here is that most of these, the models that are used for deriving these SN relationships are from different test configurations. You might have difference in loading rate, specimen size, frequency of loading, even in the endurance limit. That is applied for the testing. Fatigue models are generally based on stress ratio. So there has been some generalization uh, done for these fatigue models by Lee and Bart. Again, however, the issue is that they that is also not considering more parameters. It is only based on stress ratio and the allowable load repetitions. So an attempt was made to develop fatigue-based material models for a larger range of parameters and for a wider range of dosage of fibers. And uh, the parameters identified were the stress ratio, frequency of loading, uh, length of fiber and the diameter of fiber, volume of fibers, aspect ratio and reinforcing index. These parameters were identified based on the literature review and a correlation matrix was obtained and then based on the significant parameters, a multiple linear regression analysis was done. So this is the correlation matrix and the based on the correlation matrix, progressive lean, multiple linear regression was done to obtain the generalized fatigue models. Now, the population of points uh, or for developing these models are represented here and the obtained, the, the most significant model is also presented here. So these models, if you see for the uncracked uh, SFRC, the, made, the relevant parameters were stress ratio, diameter, length into volume ratio, volume fraction, aspect ratio, and a reinforcing index. Whereas in the pre cat stage, it is, uh, uh, it is related to stress ratio, length, and reinforcing index. So you can see the R square value for both the curves and uh, a, a t-test and the p-test was conducted to uh, obtain the best fit curve. Now, if you look at a comparison between the models, the IRC model, which is IRC SP46 in model, Lee and Bar model, which is one of the generalized fatigue models, Germano and Plitzari models are the models that uh, have been developed for pre-cracked uh, testing, so from pre-cracked testing. So we have, if you look at the gray curve and the orange curve are for pre-cracked testing. Uh, oh, sorry, the gray one and the orange one are for, um, sorry, yeah. So we have the IRC model and the Lee and Bar model and the Gen EFRC model. These three models are for uncracked testing, whereas the green one and the yellow one are for the, that is, I think by mistake, the Germano and Pizzari is shown here as red, it is actually green. So Germano and Pizzari and the yellow one is for the generalized pre-cracked FRC model. What you can see clearly is that at higher stress levels, there is variation between the models, which is possibly because in the Gen FRC and Gen EFRC model, we are capturing more number of parameters compared to the um, other models, which are only based on the stress ratio. We will see uh, IRCSP model, which is the blue one, is quite conservative. And uh, we can also see that the Gen EFRC model provides least conservative prediction of fatigue life at higher stress levels. Now, moving forward, uh, these models were incorporated in various design methods. So if you look at IRC method with the original fatigue model that was that is already there in IRC, you get a thickness requirement of 220. This is done for the same load same k value, modulus value or modulus of subgrade value. 
So we get a, a thick and same a fiber type and dosage. So if you compare, you get the, a, a very high thickness requirement for the IRC method. Again, if you change the fatigue model in IRC to the Gen EFRC model, you get better, uh, less uh, requirement of thickness, which is more optimized. Both MEFRC method with the original fatigue model proposed in that model, as well as method, as well as the Gen EFRC model, they are very similar. Uh, and the modified ACPA method is between the IRC method and the MEFRC method results. So this then a parametric study was conducted wherein uh, the first study was done by varying the dosage of fibers. Then the second study was done with, by varying the modulus of subgrade. And the last study was done by varying the load. What was very uh, interesting was that modulus of subgrade variation uh, was not causing as sensitive a uh, change as that of variation of dosage or variation of load. So this is what you get. All this was done for the MEFRC with the uh, GenFRC model, uh, MEFRC uh, test uh, method with the GenFRC model. So what the conclusion is that the Gen FRC, Gen FRC model, that is the generalized elastic and plastic FRC model, provide a prediction of fatigue life, which is representative of SFRC, steel fiber reinforced concrete for a larger range of fiber dosage. And the most influencing parameters that could be obtained, that were obtained from the statistical analysis was the stress ratio, diameter, product of length and volume fraction, aspect ratio, reinforcing index. Now, if you look at the design solution, you see that IRC method is more com most conservative compared to the other methods. MEFRC method is sensitive to both dosage variation and K-value variation compared to IRC SP method. Uh, which indicates that we are more optimized if you are looking at MEFRC method because slight variation in dosage if, or higher variation in dosage and K, if it is not going to modify the design, that means we are not going to get the derive the benefit of the material. Now, MEFRC method with the Gen FRC model, that is the model that we have developed from the statistical modeling, is the most efficient in capturing the effect of fibers. And this study is relevant since we are uh, we need a generalized model to have a rational design of SFRC payment. As an extension to this work, we are now conducting experimental validation for these proposed models. Uh, and soon we will be publishing this result. I would like to acknowledge my, my, uh, my supervisor, Professor Gittu, uh, with whom I started this work and we have developed this MEFRC technique, MEFRC design method and uh, extensive help given by the staff of civil engineering lab at IIT Balakad for conducting the experiments uh, for that led to this uh, work. Thank you.